We're going to be talking about custom directives, and this is one of the most overlooked parts of the Vue ecosystem in my experience. People tend to make custom components and custom composables all the time, but they very rarely reach for directives. These can be a really great solution to a number of problems, and we'll see in this example, it's probably the most concise way to achieve what we're going to be doing. The goal is to create a directive which applies different animations. We have this red-green animation, red and green only, and then we have a different speed, so we want to be able to change the color, style, and the speed of the animation using a directive. I think most developers in this case would reach for something like a computed property or a class or style binding, but it turns out a directive is a really good solution in this particular scenario. Let's go ahead now and get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the template we're given. We're going to be designing this vChristmas directive. There are a few different variations. We have the default one, we're going to have an argument, that's what this is called here, after the colon, and we're also going to have a value. It is possible to combine, combine arguments and values, and there's also something called a modifier which we're going to talk about as well. We want this to be nice and type safe, so we're going to see how you can accomplish that as well. Let's get started. If we head over to main, we can see we're registering our directive here. You pass in the name, and then a function or an object. We're going to head into Christmas now and start defining this. We're going to make sure this is an object, that's the syntax we're going to be using. It's going to be a directive type, so we're going to pass in a directive. In this case, it should be a const. And that is going to take two generics, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. The first generic argument is going to be the type of the element. In this case, it can be used with any HTML element. The second one is going to be the type of the value. In our case, it is going to be a number. Just to clarify what that number is going to be, it refers to this here, 10. It can also be undefined, so we need to make sure we're correctly handling that. The next thing I usually do when I'm designing a directive is just go ahead and do some console logging to see what's going on. There are a bunch of different hooks we can use. I'm going to use created because I only want these to be applied once. I want this to be a fairly static and simple directive, but you can make these dynamic as well by using something like updated, which is going to be called every time your component re-renders. The first argument is always going to be the element, and the second is going to be something called the binding. I'm going to do a log on both of these just to show you what's going on. If we now save it and head back to our browser, we should have gotten rid of our errors, and there we go, we have a console log over here. The first argument is going to be the element. You can see it's an actual reference to a HTML element. And the second one is going to be this large complex object. Take a look inside of here. The first one has no argument, uh, but if we head down to the second one, we are going to see the argument is red. The third one has an argument of green. And if we head down to the fourth one, we're also going to see a value of 10. You also see old value. If you're using something like the updated hook, you're going to see the previous and the new value. And then you can conditionally do something depending on how those have changed. The next thing we're going to do is apply our class. So let's head back to our editor and do that. Heading back to the application, we have red and green. We also need to have a default class. Just to show you the styling, we have red, green, green, red. We have the Christmas text and we have this cool animation. We're going to start off with these three classes, the default, green, and red. So if we head back to our directive, we can go ahead and do a conditional check. I'm going to see if an argument is provided. If it is, we're going to go ahead and add this class. So we can say element.classList.add and go ahead and say binding.arg. If we save this off and head back to our browser, we should be seeing something a little bit more interesting. We are getting red and green now. We haven't got the animation, but we're going to solve that problem in just a moment. The next thing we need to do is have our default class, and that one is going to be red green. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing in this else statement. We're going to apply our class inside of here, and that one is going to be red green. We save this off and head back to the browser, that is going to be working correctly. The next thing we need to do is add the class for the animation. That is going to be the Christmas text class. Let's go ahead and add that, add that regardless because we always want to have that default class. So we're just going to say class list.add and pass in Christmas text. We save this off and head back to our browser, that should be our animation. And we can see all four of these are receiving the same animation. That is correct for the first three, but for the fourth one, we want to use the value and add a dynamic animation. So let's go ahead and do that. Just to, as a clarifier, we have binding here, and that is going to have value. And if there is a value, we're going to go ahead and apply that. The styling or the, the animation is done using this class down here. Uh, this is it right here. Text clip two seconds is infinite. So we are going to have a default value as well. Let's go ahead and create a new variable for this called style. We're going to use a string interpolation here. We are going to have a default value of two. Uh, we're going to start off by using binding.val, otherwise I'm just going to go ahead and apply two. 
Finally, make sure you do not have a semicolon here. If you do, this is going to be invalid. When we're applying the style, you must remove the semicolon. This is part of a CSS style sheet, but it's not going to work for inline styles. I've made this mistake before and it's kind of hard to track down. Either way, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and apply our style by say l.style.animation and just go ahead and say style. Finally, I like to inline things instead of having temporary variables, so I'm going to do that as well. If we save this off and head back to our browser, this should all be working. We can see this bottom one has a far slower animation, so that is being correctly applied. Everything is working as expected. Uh, just to clarify what you can uh, easily make a mistake doing is putting this semicolon here. This will not work. I have done this before. Uh, it's very frustrating and difficult to debug. So make sure you do not have this semicolon here. Uh, now that that's working, I wanted to show you a few more tricks. Uh, the first one was how you can use the, uh, the, the modifiers. Just to clarify what a modifier is, it's going to be something like this. You can do red.green.a, b, c, d, or something like this. If we go ahead and head over to our, our directive, I am going to do another console log just to show you what's going on and do a console log on binding. We can go ahead and say modifiers, save this off and head back to the browser and we should see something interesting. These are both going to be true. Uh, so you might think, how do you type this? These are actually already typed by default. These are always going to be true or false. So you can just see if they're present and see if they exist. If they do, it is always going to be a Boolean. So it is fairly uh, straightforward to type safe or have type safety for your modifiers. That's most of the challenge completed. The last thing I wanted to talk about was how you might test this. And this is actually a very tricky one to test. Uh, people sometimes test their directives in isolation. This one's very simple and I don't see a ton of value in testing this in isolation. We really do need to write a proper test using something like Cypress or maybe Storybook. The problem is we are not just doing a static image. This is going to be an animation. And there's not really a good visual regression service in my experience that can actually test these kind of animations. They generally rely, to, rely on taking a screenshot and then comparing it to an existing screenshot, but they're never very stable. So you're going to find the screenshot is always taken at a slightly different time and you always have a slightly different diff on the image. I'm not really sure how people test very heavy animation based apps. I am going to look into this one a little bit more and I will post an update once I find a good solution. If you know how to test this kind of animation heavy application, please share with me, I, I would love to know. Either way, that does bring us to the end of this lecture and I will see you in the next one, which is going to be the final advent of Vue Challenge for this year.